Welcome kapatid to our series on how to answer law school and bar problems. Today we are taking a look at a problem from the 2022 bar exam. I'll be showing you precisely how to answer a problem, how to be responsive to a problem, and how you can also arrive at an elegant and precise answer all on your own. All of this and more coming right up. Hi, my name is Lex and welcome to Lex in Motion. In this channel, I'll be helping you build your competence, confidence, and capability in law school. Start today by hitting the subscribe button below. New episodes are posted every Friday. Without further ado, let us now begin with a problem from the 2022 bar examination. I'll be showing it on your screen right now. The first step in answering every problem is to take a deep breath. Find a way to calm yourself down. Don't look at the problem. Don't look at your screen. Ipikit mo ang iyong mga mata kapatid at huminga ka lang muna ng malalim. The second step is to take another deep breath. As you exhale, know and understand that however way you're going to answer this next problem really is not going to matter. Tuldok lang ito kapatid, it is a dot, a speck, minutiae in the great grand story of your law school journey. And as you exhale, envision yourself passing your exam. Passing the bar exam, taking the oath and what you'll be wearing on your roll signing. Now, you are ready to look at the problem. The third step is to read the last sentence, then the second to the last sentence, and then the two sentences together. If what you see at the end of the problem are phrases like explain briefly or discuss fully, feel free to include these with the last sentence. We do this, kapatid, in order for us to zero in on the problem. We can only be responsive if we know exactly what is being asked. We skip ahead to the last sentence because this is where the question is usually found. Remember, we can only be responsive if we know exactly what is being asked. Let's look at the last sentence of the problem. Is the public prosecutor correct? Explain briefly. Let's read the second to the last sentence of the problem for more clues. The public prosecutor filed two informations charging Kiko for two separate offenses, reckless imprudence resulting in serious physical injuries for the injuries suffered by the passengers, and reckless imprudence resulting in homicide and damage to property for Rafael's death and the damage to the jeepney. These two sentences together should automatically trigger in your head the concept of criminal negligence as defined in Article 365 of the Revised Penal Code. Kadalasan ay hindi na ito inaabot sa discussion ng criminal law to kapatid dahil gahol na gahol ang buong klase sa oras. Maaari mo itong makita sa criminal law review pero hindi ito masyadong tinatalakay. The fourth step is for us to identify what is being asked in this problem. This is your guiding star. Ito at ito lang talaga ang maaari nating mabalikan kung sakaling tayo ay nalunod na sa mga facts at arguments ng ating examiner. What is being asked in this problem? Here, the examiner is asking us whether or not we agree with the move of the public prosecutor. Then we are being asked to make a brief explanation as to why. The next step is for us to identify the rule, concept, provision, or doctrine that is being asked in the problem. The master key to being hyper-responsive is by identifying the exact rule, provision, concept, or doctrine upon which the examiner has built the problem. If we can reverse engineer how the problem was drafted in the first place, then it gives us the fighting chance to give the precise answer that the examiner is looking for. Dito sa problem na ito kapatid, ano kaya ang sinusubukan sa atin ng ating examiner? What is the rule, concept, provision, or doctrine that is being tested in this problem? If what is being tested is still unclear to you based only on the last two sentences, then feel free to come back to this after the next step. 
Hear what is being tested is our understanding of reckless imprudence under Article 365 of the Revised Penal Code. This falls under the much wider umbrella of criminal negligence. The next step now, kapatid, is for us to read the problem from start to finish. We will look for bits and pieces, anything really, that will help us answer the question. We will go over the problem line by line and look for clues that might help us give to the examiner the answer he or she wants. If you see an actor, mark it. If you see the actor's action, mark it. If you think something might be relevant, then mark it. All others we can safely ignore as noise. I hope I'm still making sense so far. Let's begin reading the problem from start to finish. On May 15, 2013, at around 3 a.m., Lucy, Mary, and Rafael were on board a passenger jeepney with Rafael behind the wheel. They were traversing the highway on the southbound lane. Meanwhile, a Virgen bus driven by Kiko was traveling along the northbound lane. Kiko overtook the vehicle in front of him, which caused him to occupy the opposite lane where the jeepney was on. With the Virgen bus, Traveling at a high speed, Rafael tried to avoid the collision but failed. The bus hit the jeepney which resulted in Rafael's death. Serious physical injuries to Lucy and Mary and extensive damage to the jeepney amounting to 500,000 pesos. The public prosecutor filed two informations charging Kiko for two separate offenses. Reckless imprudence resulting in serious physical injuries for the injuries suffered by the passengers and reckless imprudence resulting in homicide and damage to property for Rafael. Rafael's death and the damage to the jeepney. In the first line of the paragraph, the examiner paints a picture of a fatal collision. The first vehicle is a passenger jeepney driven by Rafael. On board are two other persons, Lucy and Mary. The second vehicle was a Verhen bus, which was then being driven by Kiko, whose criminal liability we are supposed to determine. He overtook the vehicle in front of him pero parang nabitin siya o iniisip niyang siya ay mapagbibigyan ni Rafael. Mabilis ang kanyang takbo at siya ay bumangga sa jeep ni Rafael. As a result of the collision, Rafael died. Lucy and Mary were seriously injured. The collision also resulted in the destruction of the jeepney in the amount of 500,000 pesos. The prosecutor who was handling the case charged Kiko with two crimes. The first one was for reckless imprudence resulting in serious physical injuries for what Lucy and Mary had suffered. The second information, the prosecutor bundled the death of Rafael and the damage to the jeep. Kiko was also charged with reckless imprudence resulting to homicide and damage to property. The examiner is now asking us whether or not the prosecutor was correct. Tama kaya itong sinama niya ang homicide sa damage to property. After marking our paragraph, it should look like this. Knowing what you now know about the problem, please pause this video and type up your answers in the comment section. This is the only way for me to gauge your answers and I will try to respond as best as I can. Libre dito ang magkamali kapatid. Hindi mo ito ikakabagsak dahil hindi mo ako professor at hindi rin kita estudyante. Huwag kang matatakot na magkakamali dito kapatid kung ikakatama mo naman sa iyong quiz at midterms o maging iyong bar exam. This problem is a good illustration of the technique I call leading. Leading is the process of dropping as many bits and pieces of information for a student to reach a particular conclusion or maintain a particular position or to support a given argument. Leading is all about baiting the student to give the incorrect answer. It works best against students who are prepared, who are ready, but not at 100%. Okay lang yan kapatid kung hindi ka tinatablan ng leading, lalo na kung wala ka pa sa kalakati ng iyong naaaral para sa inyong quiz o exam. Leading puts the student into a position where he or she seems to have no other choice but to agree with the position, the argument, or the conclusion that the examiner has laid down before you. On the flip side, our instincts tell us that this position is wrong, much like the story of Hansel and Gretel. When they were led to the hut or the house of the evil witch who eats little children. 
Leading also preys on our natural tendency to overthink our own answers. When you face questions where the examiner uses the technique of leading, my advice is for you to follow your gut instinct. If the answer is too easy, it's probably incorrect. The answer might be found in some obscure case or some exception that may not have been necessarily covered in your classes. Remember kapatid that Article 365 of the Revised Penal Code is not a crime. It is only a mode of committing a crime. It is committed through reckless imprudence in any act which would be a grave, less grave or light felony. There is reckless imprudence when the offender fails to do an act Such failure is voluntary but also without malice and that there is material damage arising from the doing or the failure to do of an act. There is simple negligence when the act results in a grave or less grave felony. Simple negligence happens when there is a lack of precaution on the part of the offender. The damage that happens here is not immediate, not obvious, or the danger that should have been avoided is not clearly manifest. Here kapatid walang duda na kasalanan ni Kiko ang namatay si Rafael. Pwedeng hindi muna siya nag-overtake o pwedeng bumalik na lang siya sa linya niya. Dahil sa kanyang kapabayaan ay nasaktan si Lucy at Mary, namatay si Rafael at nasira ang jeep. All of these things arose from one single act of Kiko. That is the point of criminal negligence. It is not a crime per se. Hindi natin ito pwedeng bilangin pa isa-isa. Because criminal negligence is only a means of committing a crime. Dito nagkamali ang ating prosecutor. I is ang negligent act. I is ang crime. I is lang ang information. So, we begin our suggested answer with no, the public prosecutor is incorrect because there should only be one charge of reckless imprudence. Notice kapatid that we began our suggested answer with in this problem. Masakit sa mata ang mabasa ang in the case at bar. Dahil wala naman tayo sa korte at ito ay isang academic exercise. Hindi mo yun ikinakatalino kapatid. Pwedeng pwede na rin kami sa here kama dahil madali lang itong dot-dotin sa iyong keyboard. I hope I'm still making sense. Next, we need to write our legal basis. The law does not require that you cite the entire provision of the law. All that matters is you write the most relevant portions of the law. Under our criminal laws, reckless imprudence is not a crime but only a mode of committing a crime. All the consequences on persons and property are relevant only as to the determination of a penalty. Notice kapatid that I have used the precise language of the law. The law demands precision in everything we do. However, I have taken the liberty of not writing the entirety of the provision. Doon lang tayo sa relevant, mahalaga at magagamit natin sa susunod na paragraph. Our next line is our most important paragraph, our arguments. This is where you have to argue. Ilaban mo yan kapatid. You cannot parrot back to the examiner the facts that he or she has written down. Wala siyang paki dito kapatid dahil siya ang nagsulat ng problem. Malamang sa malamang ay alam din naman niya ang kwento nito. In this next line, we have to tell the examiner why we have taken this position and why we have chosen this legal basis. We have to give back to the examiner what he or she needs. It's our chance to say, ha, I see what you did there. We do this by arguing why we are correct. In effect, we need to sell to the examiner why we are correct. You can land at the correct answer, kapatid, pero kung hindi mo naman ito maibebenta, kung hindi mo naman makukumbinsi ang examiner na tama ka, ay wala ka na rin pinagkaiba sa ilang libong sagot na dadaan lang sa kanyang mga mata. We stand out by first being hyper-responsive to the problem and second through our eloquence. This begins by laying down the strongest argument. What is our strongest argument here? The strongest argument here is that the death and injuries and the damage to property all arose from one singular act of negligence. Hindi pwedeng hati-hatiin ito kapatid dahil ang extent ng injury or damage ay gagamitin lang para sa computation ng danyos laban kay Kiko. Now, how do we say all of this in the simplest, most concise manner possible? 
In this problem, kama, the public prosecutor is incorrect because the death, physical injuries, and damage to the jeepney only arose from one singular act of imprudence. Notice kapatid that we began our suggested answer with in this problem. Masakit sa mata ang mabasa ang in the case at bar dahil wala naman tayo sa korte at ito ay isang academic exercise. Hindi mo yun ni kinakatalino kapatid. Pwedeng pwede na rin kami sa here kama dahil madali lang itong dot-dotin sa iyong keyboard. I hope I'm still making sense so far. Next, you need to phrase your answer in the form of an argument. You are in law school because you are hoping that someday, one day, you will be a lawyer. At a certain point in your life, kapatid, you will be arguing for a living. Hindi ko naman sinasabi na maging palaaway ka, kapatid. Arguing means convincing your professor, your examiner, or the courts on the merits of your position. Arguing means selling your position and convincing your professor of the correctness of your answer. In your third paragraph, you need to argue. Hindi ka pwedeng umulit lang ng facts. Wala ka nang magiging kaibahan sa ilang libong booklet o answer sheet na dadaan lang sa mata ng mga examiner. Dapat kapag binasa ng professor mo ang sagot mo, masasabi niya na magiging abogada ang batang are. With our conclusion, the suggested answer should look like this. No, kama, the public prosecutor is incorrect because there should only be one charge of reckless imprudence. Under our criminal laws, reckless imprudence is not a crime but only a mode of committing a crime. All the consequences on persons and property are relevant only as to the determination of the penalty. In this problem, the public prosecutor is incorrect because the death, physical injuries, and damage to the jeepney only arose from one singular act of imprudence. For this reason, Kiko should only be charged under one information. The worst mistake you can make in a conclusion is to simply repeat your opening statement. This would be a waste of your examiners or professors precious time and attention. Marami ring hindi na lang nagsusulat ng conclusion dahil ayaw na lang nilang umulit lang ng first sentence. When you don't know what to write, Focus on the fruits, effects, and results. Assuming that your answer is correct. Eh, ano kaya ngayon? Salamat kapatid at sinamahan mo ako sa ilang minuto na tayo ay nagsagot ng isang bareksam problem. I will be doing my best to respond to all of your answers in the comments and give you timely feedback. Sana at kahit papano ay may natutunan ka. The means and methods I've discussed here are all contained in our digital workbook 8, 101 Practice Problems for Lost Law Students and Bar Takers. Here you will be tasked with answering about 105 bar problems spread out in various bar subjects. All of the answers here are broken down, explained, and discussed in much much greater detail than what we have done here. You will also learn about how examiners draft their problems, where questions come from, and how to predict with a reasonable degree of accuracy the problems that might come out in your midterm and final exams. In this workbook, I've also discussed the common tactics that professors use to confuse law students and baristas. At ano ang pwedeng pangontra sa mga tactics nila? Narito rin ang mga typical na mali ng mga law students sa kanilang mga sagot at kung paano natin ito gagamutin. Follow along the journey as we help you take your answers from miserable to elegante. Grab your copy of Ocho, 101 Practice Problems for Lost Law Students and Bar Takers through the links in the description box below. If you would like to see more episodes on how to answer law school exams and bar problems, please let me know by typing yes in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Like and share this video for good law school karma and I will see you next Friday.